everyone. Welcome to The Path of Me. I'm your host, Wendy Hutchinson. And today's guest is Nikki Keith. She's a mom of seven and um, a new friend of mine. And I was so inspired by her because I, I can't even wrestle and wrangle two kids. So for her to be raising seven, I thought was going to be such an interesting story. So welcome, Nikki. Thanks for joining Hi. me. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you carving time out of your very busy life, especially since it's <laughs> summer. So all the kids are home. Yep. Yep. That does make it a little more wild, but uh, kind of nice to take a minute. So, yeah, I was, I was curious, you know, the first thing I really wanted to ask you was what have you learned about yourself raising seven kids? I mean, there's so many lessons that come from the challenges of that and the joys of it too, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think like most moms would say, I, I wish I was a little more patient for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but then in the same breath, I'm like, but I have seven humans that are like constantly asking me, you know, this, that, and the other and remembering all the things. So like, maybe I am more patient than I give myself credit for, but um, I've learned that I am far better uh, equipped for multitasking and remembering like great volumes of things than I once thought. So that's been interesting. Are you, My, more, are you more forgiving of yourself because you do have seven kids? So if something slips through the cracks, like a permission slip or a, you know, it's a lot of emails. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I. Half on yourself. I. What did I do? Um, I'm super type A personality. So like I am pretty on top of everything every once in a while, like every once in a while, I'll just have a hot mess day and I just mess up everything. And I'm like, I give up. Sometimes you get humbled, right? Yeah, for sure. Like every once in a while, but I'm not the most forgiving of myself. I wouldn't say, but. Does that come from like your upbringing? Like you're an only child. Yes. Right? So um, were you always kind of a perfectionist, a type A, like, was that kind of part of your profile your whole life? Or was that something that kind of kicked in a little bit later, like in your adult? No, that was uh, my whole life, like very perfectionist to try to like diffuse, you know, certain personalities and just try to, you know, keep everything very chill and peaceful. Like I like it. So yeah the, that's really hard because you don't really have to kind of came naturally you don't always have control over the other players in the family so that's the hard part is we could do everything we can do but life still exactly still show up that's as true. themselves I was also a very much a perfectionist and it was such a um exhausting um, experience for me before I was able to really get a handle on it and kind of change the direction I was going because I, um, I was never enough. Like I was always chasing that next level. Yep. And, um, I was very critical of myself. I was really, really hard on myself. And it was really difficult because I was always trying to get my kids to kind of align with my program <laughs> yeah. you're not having it so so how's it going for you no. seven kids um so they are all extremely different mm -hmm. uh a few of them have you know definitely some similarities but I like I said to my oldest two daughters about my third daughter the other day I was like somehow I feel like she got both of y'all's best and worst qualities rolled into one and they're like how tell us and I'm like well <laughs> but so they they do have their similarities but they are all their own special flavor of human and you can't you can't parent them the same way and you can't like the same things that work really well and are you know give one child a lot of clarity just do not work for the other one like you might as well be talking to a wall. It's like a work of in progress, right? You, you have to figure out, you know, what works for who. And, you know, I'm like, everybody's personality is different. So it really makes a lot of sense. I'm guessing you're pretty adaptable. 
are flexible or no? Like I would think if you're not flexible, it'd be really difficult to have that many personalities and that many things you're trying to manage. I'm definitely trying to adapt and, you know, like, you know, you learn each kid as you go, as they grow and everything. So that's, you know, always a, a work in progress, but also like, you know, there you always have your like you, the base rules that are like, this is non-negotiable. You can't do this. Okay. And that's like across the board for everybody, but, um, you know, with everything else, it just, it's a little give, a little take and you just work it out. It must have been such a surprise for you being an only child to manage dynamics of such a large family. How, what's the age ranges of your kids? What are the ages of your kids? So I have 15, 14, 12, 10, uh, seven, six, and almost five. Wow. So you're kind of like a couple of clusters together, real close yeah. and a little bit of a gap in between the middle, the middle. Uh, my 10 year old, he is really like in the middle, like he's a little too young to run with the big three as we call them. And then he's just a little bit too old to really be on the same league with uh, the little three who we call triple trouble. And <laughs> it's supposed they, to get easier as you go, but it sounds oh, like no. you, you no. up the ante with like, the three. I had three under three and I was like, I will never, ever, ever do that again. Oh, I did. And I think it's more fun the second time, but those little three girls are, oh, they're crazy. Those They're hell on wheels. Like they aren't for the faint of heart. <laughs> they are very called triple trouble, but they're a mess. <laughs> they're a hot mess. Wait till they're teenagers. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. They're, hold they're on. One grade behind each other. So this year the baby starts kindergarten and then sisters are going to be in first and second grade. So they're just boom, boom, boom in school. Well, I know a lot of people are going to ask this. So I'm just going to ask you what inspired you to have seven children coming from a, in a family with you as an only child. I'm, I'm just kind of really, I know people are going to be curious about that. Yeah. So I always want a big family or no, not at all. I, I always knew that I wanted to have two kids eventually. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was thinking probably like maybe or when I'm like 25 or something and I found myself pregnant at 20. Surprise. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, cool. A baby. I don't mm -hmm. know what to do with a baby. I've never been around a baby. They gave me this baby at the hospital and they let me take her home. I was like, wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, That's a lot to manage. Yeah. It was shocking okay. to me, but like, I realized I really liked having the baby and she was just awesome and adorable. And I'm like, you know, I definitely wasn't planning to have her quite as early as I had her, but I was definitely not disappointed. And then I'm like, well, I definitely want her to have a sibling so that she's not by herself like me. Mm -hmm. And he also came quite more uh, speedily than I was expecting. So they're 11 and a half months apart. Wow. And yeah, so I very quickly figured out how to have two kids at 21 years old. Were and, you working or married or? Um, so we single so, or? No, um, John and I got together right before I found out that I was having our oldest and so wow. that's a pretty big uh conversation to have <laughs> you just with a new person that you really like yes yes that was pretty ridiculous I was like hey so I have some news I'm pregnant break up with me and he's like no and I'm like Mm, I'm like no no I said I'm having a baby not you me me I'm having a baby and he's like yeah let's have a baby I'm like what is wrong with you like seriously. <laughs> who are you <laughs> I was like, so I asked him for about six months I was like are you sure because you can bail like I don't blame you like go it's yeah. good but he's like no and so 
we got married when Marley was three months old and he has been with her uh, and been her dad like her whole life. Well, he embraced before. fatherhood clearly because he's a great dad. Yeah. You guys are great parents. And I was, I was so amazed that you could just manage it all. Like the logistics to me, like I'll be, you know, I think about, okay, what happens when the whole family gets COVID? Like, how do you oh, get that. food? How do you, you know, take everyone to the doctor? How do you like manage it? You know, it's how do you manage the volume of everything? Oh. It's all so exponentially. It rich, is. You know? It really is. I, I actually like, I've had COVID twice <laughs> um, and I don't recommend it. It wasn't great, but Honestly, I had pneumonia uh, in 2019 and I was far sicker then. And two of the other kids, like two of the kids got pneumonia and then like two more were also sick. And so I was like single-handedly dragging four kids to the pediatrician. And I was also- It falls extremely, like dominoes, right? So it's like- Extremely sick to the point that the pediatrician was like, can I, can I, um, like with the, the stethoscope, can I listen to you? And I'm like me, I'm here with the, them, the four of them. And she's like, I know, but I listen to them. Can I listen to you? And I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. she listens to me. And I'm like, do I need to go back to the doctor? And she's like, yeah, she's like, can you drive home? And I'm like, I'm gonna, <laughs> she's, oh, oh, I'm like, is what it is. Yeah. Well, I mean, just so people know, Nikki's husband is on shifts. He's, he's the yes. gas control. So he's gone for seven days on 12 hour shifts. Mm -hmm. um, I think, yeah. Seven. yeah, it was just prior. He was still with his job prior to the job that he's working currently. And so his hours were just wild sometimes with his projects and stuff. And it was just unhelpable. <laughs> I want to ask this question because I know for myself, having been a perfectionist and always wanting to have control, it, it would be so hard for me to be in a situation where I was forced to, to let go of control. Were you, have you let go of something? I mean, like some things would just have to go like, I mean, I would think there's always dishes in the sink and there's going to always be mounds of laundry. And I mean, for me, yeah. I, I used to be so regimented. This is before I started working on myself and kind of letting some of these things go. But I was thinking you're so outnumbered in terms yeah. of volume, like what have, have you learned to let go of being a mom of such a large family? I just try to like give myself a little grace here and there when I can, like, you know, I'm always annoyed if I leave laundry in a basket for a week, but it happens like, um, you know, the different kids have different chores that they help out with. And so, you know, my older two girls, they usually do the dishes and, you know, sometimes like they, they actually went out of town for about a week and a half with my husband's grandparents. And I'm like, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to do the dishes tonight. I, uh, like I hadn't told anybody, but I had told myself and um, I was like, I'm just not going to do it. And, and then my oldest son comes up and he starts like scrubbing dishes. And he's like, he's like, here, I'm going to rinse these. Do you want to load them? And I'm like, I guess I'm doing the dishes. I'm like, but, but he noticed. So I was really yeah. happy. Yeah. That's so sweet. Mm -hmm. I was curious also like logistically, just the food bill must be insane. Like nine people. And I'm, I was, I was trying to think going through a pandemic oh. and trying to feed nine people and you're all stuck at home and all these personalities are percolating and firing. I can't imagine how you that survived was, it and school really when we school. were quarantined because, you know, like a lot of them, like they, they understood, but like kids can only understand so much. And so like, you know, after like a month or so of quarantine, they're like, but why can't we go see our friends? And I was like, because they said we can't, we're supposed to stay home. And like, and then they're like taking it out on me. Right. All the frustrations, and, right. And I'm like, trust me, I want to let you out of here. I, want <laughs> I would love to open the gate to the zoo and let you all oh, yeah. run free. <laughs> I'm like, my, my oldest turned uh, 13. She hit the teens during quarantine. 
And I was just like, oh goodness, I managed to go out and get her a cake from her favorite place. But like, it was, and just the cooking in general, that seems to be something that I've just really been trying to give myself a little grace on, but I've been really burnt out on it because like, I basically cook for a dinner party every time I cook. Right. Even lunch, even breakfast. Yeah. It's, You're serving it's, nine people typically. It's a lot. And, you know, just the volume of like, if I'm making a soup or spaghetti, like I always need the eight quart pot. The six just doesn't cut it. <laughs> like frequently I'll bring out the 12 quart pot and like, you know, sometimes I'm like, oh, do you want to, you know, friends will be in over and I'm, do you want to eat? And they're like, do you have enough? And I'm like, I always have enough. Do you Trust have like deep freeze in the garage or like, how do you? We have, we have two refrigerators with like stand up fridge freezers and then we also have a chest freezer like a deep freeze okay so I like to watch the grocery flyers and go buy meat when it's on sale yeah and I guess also uh, another question I had was just how do you manage your time there are only so many minutes in the day and you have so many places to be and so many items on your to-do list I'm just completely baffled as to how it all gets done. Do the kids, the older kids help you at all? Or is it all on your shoulders? I know when Jonathan's home, that's great, right? But for a week straight, he's not really. Yeah, yeah, for a week straight, he's not. And, you know, I, I mean, the summer makes it a little bit more flexible, except for that, you know, they're all home and, you know, I appreciate the time where I can run an errand or something and there's no kid home because I don't, the, the big kids can watch the little kids for, you know, a little bit of time. I'll never leave like very far away, but you know, it's, I didn't have children so that my children can raise my children. Right. So right. You want to be I fair to the older ones and let them have a childhood too. Exactly. And they, you know, they go out and, you know, do things with their friends and, you know, do all the stuff that they should be doing. So I try not to get any of them bogged down for too long, unless it's some kind of, you know, crisis or I'm super sick or just something. Yeah. But what amazed me too, is not only were you raising all the kids, but you have rental properties that you're in charge of. You yes. had a storage business that you were running. Like, yeah, Nikki, I, I don't know, like if you just need very little sleep, or you're just I don't, on point all the time because I don't think I could handle it. I, I don't. don't do it. I don't sleep a lot. I'm a terrible sleeper. I uh, that's probably something I should be working on. But I'm an absolutely garbage sleeper, so I don't sleep a lot. And then you know I try to get my my gym time in because that helps me keep my sanity a little bit. You go super early, like before everybody wakes up, or after you drop. No. Your- you kind of run yeah my my favorite time to go to the gym is like 8 30 in the morning Mm -hmm. so when school is in session I could drop off at all the schools and then uh just roll straight to the gym I'm curious too like logistically because you've got kids in all these different schools because they span like elementary school probably middle school this high school better because my youngest ended up going to preschool at the elementary school Perfect. where her siblings went so that was great because that got me down to one elementary school and so I would this year get up and I would take my oldest and drop her off at high school around 6 40 or 6 50 in the morning and then I would roll back home get all the littles up and get them ready for school and then get them dropped off by 7 30 and then I would roll back home and grab my two intermediate school kids and then drop them at school by like you know 8 15 8 20. So they, they had staggered start times it wasn't like they all started at 7 30 in the morning yes that was a blessing oh that that was a huge blessing. The year before it was crazy because the, the youngest was going to like a mother's day out program. And so I would have her with me 
and go to the gym after I dropped everybody else off. And then I would run straight from the gym to drop her off. And that was kind of a mess. And then I also, um, my, my little kids are in a special program where they're learning Spanish. And so they're, um, by the time they finish fifth grade, they should be completely like bilingual where they can read, write and speak Spanish. Wow, that's awesome. Yes, it, I, I'm so impressed with that program so far, but they, it's at a different elementary that I'm zoned to. Okay. And last year, my third child was in fifth grade and she had been at the zoned elementary school since kindergarten and I didn't want to change her. So then I ended up with kids at two elementary schools. And so I would, uh, drop off at two elementary schools, the intermediate school, go to the gym and then drop off at the mother's day out I'm program. Not, I'm impressed that you can even get to the gym. I don't have kids and I can't seem to get myself into a gym. I do yoga. I love the gym. I mean, that's yoga at home. I'm not like going to a class or anything, but wow. And, and you were sometimes... doing CrossFit, right? Was it CrossFit? Yes. That's not like I'm going to go hang out and run on the treadmill. That's like kind of a hardcore, maybe that's a good outlet for you. Yeah. It makes me, it makes me happy. I do things and lift things that I once never thought I could. So awesome. it's, it's great of, that you're able to do things for yourself. Yeah. It, it really helps like with my anxiety and just calm me down, I guess, mm-hmm. wear me out, calms me down. Yeah. So, yeah. I wouldn't think being at home with seven children in the summer calms you down? No, not so much. (laughs) What's been the biggest joy and surprise of having a large family? I just, I love how much they love each other. Like they, they fight and, you know, sometimes they'll be like, not so nice to each other, but like my little three girls, when my older two girls were out of town, this last about five days in, they're like, where's Marley and Kaylee? And I was like, who? And they're like, there's Marley and Kaylee. And I'm like, what? And they're like, you know, our sisters, we have sisters. And I'm like, no, you don't. I I mean, you do those two. And they're like, no, 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 mommy. (laughs) And I'm like, okay, I'm kidding. Like they'll be back in a few more days, but they just, they missed them so much. Oh, that's so cute. It was just adorable. And then, you know, my boys like tease each other and they love each other. Mm. And, you know, like is they never, they never know what it's like to not have somebody. And I love that. Like they've always, you know, got a friend or they're, you know, they're invested in each other's personal lives. They always mm-hmm. like, you know, especially the girls, they have to like know what's going on with the boy and like, who's the cute girl. And the <laughs> it's hilarious. And he's like, you the oldest boy is like, can you just make her stop? Like, just make her stop. But I was like, but she loves you. He's like, I know. Oh, and how do you carve out time with Jonathan, your husband? It, it's got to be very intentional to create it, space because the days and the to-do list has just got to be so long. You could just go days probably without even talking or just maybe by text, like, hi, remember me? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I I mean, it's been like, you know, we've had a rent house that's being renovated right now. And so, you know, whenever he's not working, he's working, which is so appreciated, but it, you know, it still takes a lot of time and, you know, and then it's just me with the kids more. How do you fill your bank? How do you fill your bank? I know CrossFit's one of them. How do you honor yourself and your time? Because you know, for me, just trying to meet the needs of two kids was very challenging. And obviously being a perfectionist, trying to do it well, you know, next level. Well, it wasn't even like, yeah. good. like oh no, I got to put a nice note in your lunch. Like have a beautiful day. You're, you're a shining star, <laughs> you know, it had to be next level. So how, how, and, and I was terrible about honoring myself and like carving out time. So I'm just I'm just curious how you have managed to make yourself a priority in certain areas of your life. 
Mm, I think that I've been kind of bad at it, honestly. And it's probably something I could continue to work on. But, you know, I do, I do have my CrossFit, which is definitely beneficial to me. And you dance too with the girls. Yes. Um, and we actually, we actually, so I was dancing and ballet and tap and then my three little girls and then my one up from that were dancing and the little girls were in a class together and I was like assistant teaching their Mm -hmm. class and so we had I don't know like eight or 12 little girls in the class and three of them were mine (laughs) and so I was doing that two hours a week for their classes and then um you know, Jonathan and the kids got COVID and we ended up not getting to do our recital that we had oh, been working on. Really? Oh. Mm-hmm. So that was crushing for the littles and for you. Yeah, it was super crushing. Like I didn't quite realize how bad I felt about it until it was the night of the recital. Oh. And then I realized that all of the other little girls I had been helping to teach these dances to, I wasn't going to get to see them dance either. And I was like, I didn't realize that I was going to be bummed about that, but I was super, super sad yeah. that I could see all of them dance. So um, I really want to honor you for really fostering the gifts in each one of your kids. Like, I, I really think it's amazing that you're able to really help nurture their interests. Like your one son is really into, he's so mechanical. Oh yeah. He's He's always got something he's wrenching on. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Huge garage area with, I don't know when I was by there, there's like a massive truck he was working on. I don't know what he was doing, but something always on something or I mean he's finally out playing but I like like ran him to the bank right before our the podcast because he had like he's done all these little just odd jobs and stuff and he had been Mm -hmm. saving up his money and he's like I can't put this money in my wallet mom I need you to take me to the bank and I'm like okay I love it I love it what do you think what do you think has been one of the um, most challenging things that you've encountered having seven kids in such a large family um I think the, um, without calling her out too much, my, my oldest, uh, had some social media that I was not, uh, ready to have her navigating yet. Mm -hmm. And like, I just, I think that dealing with kids with social media, like so hard is so hard. It's so hard to monitor. There's so much stuff and there's like, you know, just so many facets to it that you have to just like remind them to talk about it, you know, like, oh, well, don't do this or, you know, pay attention, you know, if somebody's doing this, you don't need to do this, like mm-hmm. just, you know, for common sense safety, like don't tell everybody where you live. Don't, right. you know. Right. And what's hard too is these things come up and they come out of left field. You're like, I didn't think we would be having this conversation. Like, and it, of yeah. all the things, I didn't think this would be an issue. Like, I remember my older son went off to college and I had all kinds of worries about him going off to college. Well, I never thought um, like some multi-level marketing scam was going to be part of it. <laughs> you know, he calls up and he goes, so there's this business opportunity. So what do you think about this? And I'm like, of course, I want to jump in and go, that's a terrible idea. Mm -hmm. but I didn't. I said, you know, your aunt is really savvy with business. You might want to run it by her and let her give you her opinion. And then, you know, decide. In the meantime, I'm like freaking out. Like what the (laughs) hell? (laughs) Where did that come from? (laughs) You know, like conversations always seem to come like, you know, in the middle of chaos or at nine o'clock at night. And I'm like, why are we doing this? Yeah. How did we get here? How did we get here? (laughs) But yeah, that, that definitely was something, you know, that I didn't think about when I was like having babies, you know, and then just the straight trying to like work out like any difficulties they have with each other because I never had siblings. Right. What's that been like? I mean, there's a psychological aspect to it. 
yeah, I'm still mm-hmm. working on understanding it. And I don't know that I will ever understand it because I don't have it. Yeah. And why are y'all fighting? That's so dumb. And they're like, but like, it's a battle. And I'm like, no, I think no, no, everyone no. wants to be heard. Yes. Everyone wants First. to be heard and everyone wants to be right. At the mm-hmm. and, you know, you have all those different personalities and then they right. share rooms. And so right. it definitely right. can be a battle, but yeah. But That's we're sure. Do you have other really well? And then some days I'm just like, okay, we're gonna fight all day. Yeah. But like like today, everything everybody's being nice to each other, like I was wondering if like there's a full moon and everyone just kind of loses their shit and you're just like, this is just gonna be a yeah. shit show from the get-go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I literally sometimes like people walk in the house and I'm like, welcome to the shit show. And they're like, oh <laughs> it's gonna be great. And they're like, no, no. I would think you become more tolerant. Like, I mean, life has been a great like- teacher for me. Have you become more tolerant of of I don't know, fighting or just the dynamics and I think it just kind of depends on the day and like what it is. Like if it's a new problem, then I feel like I'm fairly tolerant. But if it's like you're doing the same thing that I've told you like four thousand times that you're not allowed to do, or you, you know, overlook something that is like a daily thing that you know you have to do and you just can't get it together, then I get pretty angry. <laughs> But How do you manage like the discipline? It depends on the kid. Um, some of them are really uh, bullheaded. Mm-hmm. I have a little, a little mini me, and she is, oh, that girl. She's not the uh, runner. No, there? no, she is not the little runner, but she is. <laughs> one below her so the six-year-old and she just she knows everything and she runs the house and she gets like with the attitude and she's like like telling you and I'm like oh goodness and unfortunately she is frequently right and she like frequently like she was telling the 15 year old that she was putting some dishes away in the wrong place and my oldest was like getting real frustrated with her like and I walked in I'm like what is going on and she and Devin's like, I'm trying to tell Marley that that does not go there. And I'm like, I'm like, I think Marley knows how to do the dishes, Devin. And then I look to see what's actually going on. And Devin was in fact, right. And Marley was wrong. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, Devin, you cannot speak to your sister like that. You need to apologize to her. It is not your job. I go, but also Marley, she's not wrong. <laughs> I'm like, Maybe I you're mastering even, mediation by, by running the household. I think I am probably a good mediator yeah. for the most. Yeah. Do um, you have support? Like, do you have grandparents? I mean, do you have any help? Or is it just you and you? Sarah, your husband's working, obviously, a lot. Yeah. Um, my husband's uh, dad and stepmom are super amazing. And his grandparents, you know, they took the oldest two girls to Colorado for nice. 11 days. Really. But, um, you know, they also all have busy Life. lives. So, you know, they, they always come in in a pinch, but um, it's usually just me. Nikki, you must be so strong. I don't know if we're strong because we're, we need to, to survive, you know, Probably. like we, we're not allowed to break down because without us being on point, everything yeah. crumbles like a domino. It's like, you know, the, you chip the first domino and it's over. Yes. Yeah. Have I, you and, always and, had like this, this inner strength and this ability to multitask. And I mean, obviously I think I was because you do it, you know, but I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know that I was, I mean, I was always good at multitasking. Like I always was really good at school. Like I was, you know, gift and talented programs since like second grade and like all of that stuff kind of just came naturally to me, but I don't know that I quite realized I was as 
good at multitasking as I actually am. Yeah. I was wondering if you have any, any passions that, you know, at some point you're going to send that last kid off. I know that seems far away, but you know, what, what are some of the things that light you up? What are some of the things that you really enjoy? Obviously dancing is one of them, but what else? Yeah, I, I, I like dancing. I like CrossFit. I was like, I told John, I was like, I think I need to like deal with some hobbies that don't involve me like exhausting myself. Yeah. Go yeah. from CrossFit dance is like, just wears me out. And I sing, which I probably like more than dancing. That's nice. I like to read. I'm like, I like plants. I have all sorts That's of awesome. like basil and oregano's. And garden? I didn't notice. I didn't go in the backyard. Plants. And then I bring them. Yeah, they're just little. Uh, they're on my porch right now bring them out in the summer and, and in the winter but I just have all my little things and I just mess with those a lot and I'm like oh, all my little introverted hobbies except for the singing that you know yeah can be intro don't have to do it for anyone yeah I love it I love to sing too I That's used to awesome. you know Mike when we moved here Mike was commuting for a year from South Carolina I was selling the house we thought it oh. would sell in like three months and it took like 14 months Oh so my goodness. All the time. And you know what? I loved it. Cause I could yeah. sing at the top of my lungs every day. Nobody's there, you know, when yeah. he's home, you know, I'm not running around the house singing to American Idol or <laughs> whatever <Yep. laughs> the voice, you know, yep. but it was great. I loved it. It was like, it was like my true essence and spirit could come out when I was singing and it was the best. I'm really about that in the car. <laughs> yep, same. same here. One of the things that I, I struggled with um, in my life was I really was so about making sure everybody had what they needed that I lost myself. I wasn't really good about honoring myself. I went to spin like five times a week to deal with my stress. <laughs> Sounds like I, CrossFit. Yeah, it's like I, I had to do it. I had to do it for my sanity. Kind yeah. Of. I loved it, yeah. but I, I was there five days a week, which I realized that was a lot. Because sometimes it'd be like an hour and a half extreme spin class. <laughs> I was like, maybe I had a lot of unprocessed <laughs> emotions that I should have been dealing with at the time. But yeah. I was, I yeah. That, you know, I can relate to that. <laughs> yeah. So I was wondering how you've managed not to lose yourself and um stay aligned kind of and not have a breakdown you know because you're managing an army you really are you're managing a, it's it's like a business you know it is like a business. And all of it the school work the teacher emails just all the events that's a full time and a half job yeah. the other businesses you guys have had that you run yeah. so I'm, i i I'm was baffled. probably dealing with somewhere close to probably close to 30 teachers or maybe more than 30. God, what? Yeah. I mean, because, you know, there's like seven class periods, but mm -hmm. for the, you know, the three yeah. oldest children and, you know, they had like one shared teacher. So, you know, that right there, I met like 20 teachers, oh no God. more than that. Yeah. 20, 20 teachers or so. And then, um, maybe more. And then, you know, usually they have like classes of the one teacher teaches like, you know, reading and writing and the other one teaches like math and science or whatever on the lower levels. So, you know, then I've got like add another two and then add another two and two. Like and just two. going through your email. How do you like, your, your I, I like, email is supposed to be like tell. hundreds every day. Oh yeah. No. And I, I like, you know, as a very perfectionist type A personality, I love to uh, make sure I go through my emails and like, you know, clear out the junk mails and all of that. And so I like, I'm like, my mental health is directly and reflected by the uh, amount of unread emails in my <laughs> inbox. <laughs> that's the, that's right, the barometer. Right now, there's probably a thousand unread emails oh, in my, my 
box. So I'm <laughs> like, I'm not, not doing super hot right now with that, but you know, oh I'm staying God. on top of the, uh, the necessities. Like I had a teacher emailed me today and bragged on my third child, my second daughter about how good she did on her star test oh. and just, you know, was just bragging on what a joy she was. And I was like, oh, okay. I'm like, well, that email like really made my heart happy to open yeah. it and read it. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, you know, it, it like payment deadlines on cheerleading or right. That's the, you know, choir camp registrations, vacation Bible school registrations, all like of those, those calendar in your kitchen, like a massive calendar because I have one and I haven't even been doing it. Like I just, you keep it all up here. Mostly. Yeah. Oh my God. That's amazing. You could, yeah, probably, it, you could probably run a, be a CEO of a fortune 500 company. You're thank telling you. Me you have the skills. <laughs> I was like, I was like, maybe I'll build a resume, John. And he's like, okay. And I'm like, well, I'm like, but I don't know how to put it on there, but I'm like, if I can run seven children, you could have, a I, could, I could, I was like, I could be your personal assistant. Like I could be anybody's personal assistant. And I don't care what don't it is. You like need to be a personal assistant. I think you could run your own damn company. You don't settle for less. <laughs> well, that's, that's probably true. I don't know that I want to, but like, yeah. I was like, I just, you know, something fluffy and fun to like do. Maybe when you launch like three and you're down to four kids and life seems really cool and easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, I don't want to do something hard. I mean, I could, but I don't want to. I just want to do something fun. I've done yeah. something hard. Seven you kids is hard. I've totally come to this place where I want to do things that I enjoy. Yes. And I want to do it just because I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Because I spent my whole life being on goddamn point. Yeah. And it was hard and it was exhausting. And I was against myself all the time because no matter how good I did it I was like boy I could have done that better I should have done that better or I should have cleaned that better yeah. whatever I was always like striving to be better and never hitting the mark so it was like really hard for me to uh, celebrate wins for myself yeah or um it was really hard for me to love myself because I I just wouldn't allow it because I was like, well, when I hit this marker, then that means I'm good. Yeah, that's like me. Yeah. And um, it was really hard for me because I realized too late, like after my kids went off to college, both of them, it's kind of when I started to do more work on myself and realized, you know, I've, uh, maybe it's time for me to be kinder to myself. Maybe it's time for me to give myself some grace. Oh, then also I had a nervous breakdown. So <laughs> that helped. Yes. Yeah. Crying I, I for four months in your closet. <laughs> it does something to you. You're like, okay, I really need to take a look. What's what's going? What have I been suppressing in here? It was a lot. Oh yeah. Nope. Yep. I've been there. I, yeah. I think I kind of reached my capacity for pushing things in. Like I was maxed. Yeah, I, I, I break little bits at a time here and there. I'll run run an errand so that I can uh, go cry in the car yeah. on my way to run, run my errand or, yeah. you know, every once in a while, like apocalyptic, you know, sobbing on the floor. Yeah, I think we all have like, our limits, breathe. right? We all yeah. have our limits, you know? And then also, um, I used to pride myself on never being vulnerable and never showing weakness like you can no one could break me ever mm -hmm. nobody yeah. can break me also you're never gonna win so don't try to fight me my poor husband mm -hmm. I don't know Mike's still stuck with me that that god bless him. <laughs> you know, I've, I've changed I'm a lot more um compassionate I'm not a fighter I don't care if I win I don't need to win but boy, you know, I was pretty, pretty, pretty tough, you know, and I just, I don't know how I, um, it was like, I had my finger in the dam, you know, having all of that together. And then I took my finger out of the dam and had a breakdown because once you start crying. Oh know. yeah. 
I couldn't stop yeah. crying, you know? I did it like a couple of nights ago and like I, I felt like I had a hangover the next day except for I hadn't been drinking and I'm just like, oh. What happened? Like, that was, yeah. I was like, that was awful. I was like, I should never do that again. I know, but I, I think we need to do it because it's cathartic. We do. So I, you know, I definitely have been really bad my whole life. Oh, I just saw two uh, monarchs flying by oh, out the window. Oh, They're cool. beautiful. I, I love it. I think part of it too was I didn't, give myself the luxury no I don't and, really? I, and I'm I, like I don't have time for this I don't I don't want to like allow myself to be hurt by anyone so I like put up walls but yeah. like you know not, so explaining that to a friend of mine the other day and he was yeah. like well he's like but maybe you should just put a door in your wall like just one he's like you don't have to let everybody know where it is and I was like I love that a secret passage where you can just open it a little bit and close yeah. that your own discretion. I love that. What a wise friend. Yeah. I hope you think about that. Yeah, I have been thinking that one over for a couple of days. I'm like, mm, yeah. Put a little door in or a window. Mm -hmm. I, I like, I don't, I, I don't like to let most people know that I'm kind of a crybaby. Like, yeah, because yeah. I'm, I'm a closet crybaby. Yeah. But you know what? We all cry because we're all human. Mm -hmm. there's there's so many women out there putting on a brave face who are yeah. just crying inside and I know that because I was one of them yep people are like wow she's got her shit together no and she doesn't like, no I don't <laughs> no I don't the reality is it's a shit show over here it, we fight it all. also allows me to be like extremely like not judgmental about people for the most part I'll have friends apologize like oh like you know oh the baby's so fussy oh my house is so messy and I'm like girl like I have seven kids like like literally nothing is gonna shock me don't you think that there's a culture there's this cultural programming for women and we hold we are always being held to these high standards maybe because our parents held us to these impossible standards or had expectations or our parents were a shit show and we had to be the adult and hold together either side of the coin. There was yeah. just always these really high expectations um, and these expectations to belong and these expectations to conform and fit ourselves into these neat little boxes because then mm -hmm. that meant we were in control that we were okay, that we were accepted. Yep. Then I realized I don't want to be in that box because I don't belong in that fucking box. No, nobody belongs in that fucking box. I belong over here. <laughs> yes. I'm out here doing me and it's okay to be me. You know, it took a lot of courage mm -hmm. to let go of that veneer for me. Um, have you had that experience? I, I think I'm kind of still working on myself and, mm -hmm. you know, I am trying to find where to give myself grace and, yeah. you know, I, I'm not sure I've entirely found myself. Um, yeah, it's a process. Yeah. I, I had a friend a couple of days ago it, that is, you know, she was, one of my friends since I was like in my junior year in high school and she sent me a picture of me from my senior year in high school just out of nowhere a couple of days ago and I had never even seen that picture of me before and I'm looking at this photo and I'm like I don't even know her like who is she I'm like yeah. I mean it's me but like yeah. I don't know her anymore I think what was also um, a challenge for me was I've changed so much, obviously, from I left when I was 17. I went to college when I was 17. So, you know, that's the person my family has always known. Yeah. And I'm just not that person anymore. And as I evolved and changed, they still always thought I was this, the bullheaded one. I was the stubborn one. I, you know, I'm like, I'm not 17 anymore. I'm yeah. 56. <laughs> I've changed yeah. <laughs> a lot, <laughs> you know, when I think it's really hard to find ourselves sometimes. 
It we is. get lost in the noise, you know? Yeah, it's definitely something that I'm working towards. Yeah, we're all a work in progress. Mm-hmm. And then by doing that, we model to our kids, you know, how to give ourselves grace and how to be kind to ourselves and how to, um, that it's okay to be not a human. Yeah. And not get a 4.0 or no. I mean, you're going to have everything from the kid who just organically is on point and gets those grades and that's who they are. They're wired that way. And then they're going to have the kid that like hates school and, and yep. is an artist or whatever. I have all those kids. Yeah. And every kid in between those kids. Like. Yeah. I feel like you've become more of a compassionate human being by having all these different personalities in your house. Probably so. I've, I've always, I've always kind of been that person that like, you know, my friends will just be like, I don't know why I'm telling you this. I never tell anybody this, like, but people just always want to tell me things. And it's been like that my whole life. Mm -hmm. And I think I actually like that about myself because you're obviously empathic. Yes. Very, which is kind of a blessing and a curse. Like it's, it can be emotionally exhausting sometimes, but I like being able to have people, you know, feel comfortable with me. And I'm just trying to figure out how to not take on the energy of it all, but hold space. Yes. And to, you know, every once in a while, maybe uh, tell somebody where the door in the wall is. So yeah. Or, or yeah. And be able to open it and share a little bit about your story. Mm-hmm. And provide empathy for them. Yes but they have to earn the privilege of hearing those stories. They have to earn the privilege of you opening the door for them. Yeah. But I hope you get to a place where you can find grace, more grace towards yourself because it's kind of, for me, it was like water in the desert. I was like, so for compassion, like self-compassion and self-love. Yes. I was like, I'm so nice to everybody else. Why am I not that oh, nice? Oh, I know. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what it was. And that, that, that gap here I told you about where Mike was traveling and I didn't have any kids home. This is the first time in my life since I was 17 that I was alone. Yeah. Because I dated Mike since I was 17 or 18. I met him. And then we lived together, right? Yeah. I was like, this is the year of me. Like I can go Whatever and buy... I bought roses every week for myself, like a dozen roses. So it was like $10, you know, for a dozen. Yeah. Yeah. I bought roses. I started having like wine and popcorn for dinner, singing my lungs out, gardening. I was like, I'm living my best life. I'm like, maybe I don't have to move to Houston. Maybe I can just stay here in a little condo. A kind of visit. When John works his uh his night shift weeks and the yeah. kids are like, you know, because like I always try to eat he worked so hard and I like, you know, I would try to make sure that I had dinner, you know, or leftovers or at least something that was more like a dinner yeah. of some sort. And as much as I can, which I've been really terrible about lately, <laughs> but okay. um, yeah, when he wasn't be home and the kids, I like, I made dinner and then we cleaned up dinner and it was just like, you know, and then I, you know, fought off kids while I made dinner. And it was just this like two hour process that was exhausting and they like ate it and they, you know, were good about it. But, you know, the next day I did something like butter rotisserie chicken and a pan of macaroni and cheese from Costco and warmed it up. And they're like, you got Costco chicken and Mac? Yes, this is the best <laughs> dinner ever. And I'm like, I'm like, oh my Lord, why did I spend an hour and a half standing at the stove yeah. yesterday? Yes, I tell you, these when, kids are humbling. They're like, please please make a pan of nuggies, a whole pan. And I'm like, (laughs) okay, you know what? You just live your best life with your chicken nuggies and, um, and some vegetables because we got to have vegetables. And luckily all my kids like vegetables. That's amazing. It is amazing. I really like They like vegetables. Everyone's alive. One year I was like, what do you want for your birthday dinner? And she's like, I don't know, but I definitely want lima beans. And I was like, <laughs> what? Oh what? I'm like, okay. I'm like, let me make sure and get you your lima beans. All right. Oh my gosh. That is so funny. That is so it funny. hilarious. But yeah, so I definitely was giving myself more grace when 
with dinners or, in, oh you know, I'm like God. standing in front of the stove, like eating a tortilla or something. And they're mm -hmm. like, what are you going to eat? And I was like, I don't, I am eating. And they're like, mom, that's a tortilla. And I'm like, give me a cheese stick. And they're like, okay. I was like, and green beans. And they're like, you're going to have a tortilla, a cheese stick and green beans for dinner. And I was like, yes. And they're like, are you okay? And I was like, this is how I used to eat before y'all existed. <laughs> I, I had snacks, constant snacks, not meals. And they're like, um, I was like, trust me, it's going to be okay. It's going to be fun. And they're like, okay, mom. <laughs> but I think that is definitely, oh uh, gosh. been kind of enjoyable. You, Nikki, I think you're doing a great job. I think Thank you, you guys are, are amazing parents. I think you guys have I mean, you guys are young. You're in your thirties, right? Yes. Yes. And to have navigated so much. I mean, we know parenting just one child is an adventure. Yeah. But you multiply that by seven. And the fact that you guys still have a strong relationship, you guys still are, you love each other. Your, your kids are doing well. And I don't know. I kind of feel like we all choose our these different experiences in life. Some people mm -hmm. don't want kids. Some people have seven kids. Um, yeah. You know, but it's all an experience. And I think it's cool. And I think you're doing it well. So give yourself Thank some you. props and give yourself some love. And, you know, I know it's always been admirable to be strong, but it's also the way forward is to be vulnerable, at least with ourselves in the closet crying. Yes. <laughs> that was a lot of moments pantry. in the car crying, you know? Yeah, the car, the pantry, the pantry locks so I can lock myself in there with the snacks. It's and really great. I love that. <laughs> if you just had a little bar fridge in there, you'd be golden. <laughs> you yep. never have to come out. <laughs> no. Oh my God. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I uh, thank you for having really appreciate me. your time fun. and I'll send yeah. you, I'll, uh, I'll send you all of the, the, the links when we're done. Nikki, thank you again for thank you joining me to my audience. Thanks so much for being with us for this awesome conversation. If you have no kids or if you have 10 kids, I'm happy for you. Be kind to yourselves and I love y'all. Bye.